the clouds. Good. Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to the weekly infrastructure meeting for the Jenkins Public Infrastructure. We are the second of November. I hope everyone had a nice weekend. Um, first of all, an announcement. Uh, we will have a, a new LTS uh, upgrade this Thursday, 4th November. So please restrain merging and deploying changes uh, at least the Tuesday, the Thursday morning on the US. Ideally, we should also avoid Wednesday, but yeah, we never know. Uh, that LTS release will also be synchronized with a weekly release, of course, with the security fixes involved. Uh, there should be no functional changes on this week, weekly release, if I understood correctly. Any um, merge functional changes from the past week will be on in two weeks for the next weekly. Um, on, on that topic, we still need to find a way to disable weekly releases because apparently okay. that, the weekly that will release be the was... first. Not yet. It, it's not announcement. That's why I wanted to yeah. finish okay, announcement sorry. first, if you don't mind. Uh, are there other announcements for this week? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe related to the election. So on th on Sunday, the deadline to to register for the election is on Sunday, um, and next Monday I'll send invitation to vote and will communicate about the candidates. Um, that's all for me. Not really directly related to Jenkins Infra, but oh, well, still. still announcement. Thanks. Cool. Okay, so we can start by the elements unless someone has a last announcement. One, two, three. Okay. So note uh, first, we discovered, uh, not sure if it's something that we used to have because I remember we have seen that behavior before, uh, but when the release team is working on security a few days ago and when they disable the weekly job or any multi-branch job on release CI on infra CI, we have a job that regularly apply the configuration as code. And so each time the configuration as code and job DSL setup is reapplied, all the multi-branch jobs are enabled. Um, I was not able on during the past 15 minutes. So let's say if you know how to do that or if you are better at searching documentation and understanding job DSL than me, uh, please let us know. But it seems like that it's not possible to disable multi-branch job or GitHub organization through a directive on job DSL. There is a directive, a function disabled on the freestyle Maven and simple pipeline job, but I, I didn't find an obvious one for multi-branch, which means it changes the state of the job, but it's not exposed as a configuration item. So we must use it, use the UI, which is quite annoying because I had to disable the Kubernetes management job for now. And it should be disabled until uh, Thursday because it's trying to run again new releases. Could you just uh, change the pipeline instead maybe? If, secu if security mm -hmm. file exists, skip job, skip weekly. I'm not sure to understand. Yeah, I don't understand either, sorry. So maybe change the pipeline. Oh. So if variable equals secure, next release security or something, or then just have the pipeline skip, skip itself. Yeah. That will be a short time setup that will allow to enable Kates again, yeah. Yeah, so um, rather than people doing it manually, they PR to the pipeline. It seems that Daniel told me that it should be okay. There should be, there shouldn't be a new one. So I assume that the script is already. Once you have built something, it won't build it again. Or I, I don't know, but there is something there that's that should be his. But yeah, that that's a good idea. Um, or and maybe use it yeah until we are able with job DSL to disable it. Um, I had a message from a Jenkins contributor that told me that maybe it's only not implemented on job DSL, so that should be a contribution to do. Um, because there, since multi-branch pipeline are inheriting from the standard job structure, that should be easy to reuse the disable is just not exposed. 
<coughs> and it's already changing the state on Jenkins instances. So there is already some code at, uh, at play there. So maybe something to check, but uh, be careful when you apply changes on the chart repository. They might be skipped unless we are carefully enabling the job, running your changes merge on the master branch, disable the job, and ensure that you disable the weekly job as well. So please communicate if you want to do that prior to your change so we can ensure that we don't uh, slow down the security team. And, and what about just um, commenting the, the part in Jenkins infrastructure chat kit repository that configure release at CI? So we are sure that we don't modify that configuration. So I'm I mean, that, that's really that, sure. That, wouldn't that, would that delete the job purely and simply? Uh, yeah, I'm not no. sure about the behavior of job DSL there. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I mean, directly, so you see, when we have Helm file, we list all the application we want to have on the communities cluster. If we just comment the release, so the one that configure release at CI, it will not try to configure that one. So that's what I mean by yeah. just pushing. Yeah, comments. okay. So we are okay. still able to configure the rest. I mean, we would just. Yes, yeah, that's a time, time fix. Okay, who, who, who is uh, willing to pull request that one? That's an easy one. I can I can definitely do it right now. Not, not right it. now, but it's just to, to be sure we lead the subject that will help. Thanks, Olivier. Okay, so you confirm a question that Hervé and I had last week. Um, our system using Helm file is not able to uninstall a Helm chart. We need to do it manually when we want to clean up something. Yes, I think. Okay. Uh, can you go back on the notes on your screen, please? Yeah. Okay, so with the two temporary fixes that Tim and Olivier pro proposed, we should be able to be safe to work, continue working, and ensure that next security release should be okay. Uh, I'll take care of communicating that to the security team, if it's okay for you, once we will have implemented at least the first one. Is there any other command, question, something not clear on that topic? No, it sounds okay. good to me. So I'm moving to the next item, plugin site. Last week, we were having a DNS issue during the past team meeting. So that issue has been solved um, by switching from Alpine uh, to Debian base. It's not because Alpine is buggy, it's because the, the base Docker image used for the backend of the plugin site uh, is the official jetty and they dropped support of Alpine since two years. So that was a really, a really old Alpine uh, image. So instead of building our own, we switched to the latest, which is Debian, and it worked and it fixed the issue. So was it related to the, let's say, encrypt root certificate change? Absolutely not. It was, uh, only, uh, uh, it was only DNS and absolutely not DNSSEC. So it, no, no way it was with Let's Encrypt. That was the the symptoms were some randomly some domains were not receiving DNS answer while checking the logs of core DNS in the cluster. You saw the requests piling up on the core DNS agent on the worker where the pod was running. That was that is a characteristic of an old Alpine version not able to deal with the DNS system inside Cube. That was okay. Alpine 3.9, it's really old. And so the, the logs of the application were saying, oh, I cannot resolve ci.jenkins.io. It was able to resolve other subdomains of Jenkins.io, but not randomly CI Jenkins.io. And if you restart the pod, that might switch to another domain randomly, which is the which is a smell that, okay, you, you have an issue at low level DNS there. Um, there will be some work on using our library that should help keeping track of these old uh, images because we did not update the, these dependencies since years. So we need update CLI and stuff there. Um, and we have an external contribution from Antoine Neveu, a, cloud -based, a recent CloudBees employee. Uh, who started working on that uh, Docker image specifically. And we have an external contributor, um, 
that is also might uh, willing to work on that. So let's see. Is there any question change on that topic? So is um, there, is there sorry. a general? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Is there a general way that we can check for outdated images like that as they arrive in the cluster or as they're running in the cluster? Or is it not a, not, I'm just thinking in terms of the, the health and the monitoring, is it something worth considering looking at what's the base OS version or that kind of thing? I think I think you need a security tool that would analyze uh, based images because in our case we don't know. I mean that's the same with the Jenkins, the official Jenkins. I mean the official Jenkins image. If you run Docker pool Jenkins, you will get a very old uh, Jenkins version, and not. I mean unless you use a security tool to tell you that it's an old version, or if you know the context of the Docker image that that help. But in this case, it's really hard to. I mean, to manually detect that we were using an old Jenkins image. Yeah, I mean, we have it with that container security product that runs in our cluster and scans all the running images. Yep. And uh, for the use cases of some behaviors that are uh, critical in terms of security, that one was um, not in terms of security, sorry, performances and security. That was performances there. Uh, Falco has a set of rules, and we have a Falco installation on the clusters. Uh, Falcos has some rules that you can apply that check for some well-known behavior. So it, th there are toolings we can, but it's a matter of time to spend on that part. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Like, yeah. If, if someone is interested to contribute on that domain, um, improving the security of our infrastructure is definitely one of those domains where we need help because we don't necessarily have the time to work on those. Thank you. Um, just for the context, I think with the work that the Linux Foundation is doing with um, LFX Security V2, we may we may be able to detect that kind of issues. I'm not sure, but I think I think there are they can analyze the file from Git repositories. Yeah, I understood that LFX Security is checking the images before they are deployed in the cluster. They don't run real time analysis on the cluster like Falco or some other container tools does. We need both. We need something on the supply chain during the build of the images, but we also need something on runtime because you don't know if um, all the container images are uh, are checked by LFX security. If one of the repository is not under the standard procedure way, or if you use an external image, you are not sure. So it depends. They were speaking about an admission controller that works exactly like Falco. Uh, but still, there are some work and analysis to, to do that. Um, yeah, that's all for me on that topic. Something else? OK, let's go ahead. Uh, just a note on the AWS costs, which is the one of the main priority uh, these times. Um, we started some work on using spot instances on EC2 that the experiment worked really well. We were able to cut costs during the experiment per, per four, which is really impressive. And uh, there is a lot of features that are not documented on the plugin, on the EC2 plugin for Jenkins. So incoming pull requests. And the final configuration is gonna, the pull request for applying that on long-term on our instance is, uh, is coming. It works flawlessly even with Windows uh, machines. So that's really a quick win. Um, next step will be to do the same with the KS cluster, with the worker pool. And I, I cooked that the Azure VM plugins also has directive around spot instances on Azure as well. So that might be worth it to enable, but I haven't checked. I don't know if, if team or someone else have already played with that. I tested that it worked when someone sent a pull request for it. Fair. So, so well, yeah, I think I rewrote the pull request, but yeah, it works. You get a spot for him. It's set to the max price, so you sh you should never get evicted. You just might get it cheaper. And and Tim, is it my understanding was that when we we when we bid the price, we're actually charged the current price, not the bid price. Is that correct? Have I understood right? 
yeah so basically they should you shouldn't lose out on anything um because so yeah we're, we're bidding at the mac but bidding at the regular price but we'll take anything less than that um so you should you should always get something and and if we get evicted damien will we see that as as um build failures i mean we get some 60 second notice or something like that. We're about to be evicted, but that won't be long enough to finish most Jenkins plugin builds. So um, I assume. Go ahead. So uh, no, the build will fail uh, because the agent will receive. So Jenkins will be aware and will uh, note on the agent logs that it has been evicted. So I assume that the build failure should be able to tell us that at least for EC2. However, uh, JC Glick recently stated that there will there could be an improvement. I saw you mentioned an issue on the public tracker about being able to uh, retry a build when the cause uh, was when the cause of the failure was the agent died or was evicted or whatever, depending on the implementation. So I understand that as we will see build failure if we have an eviction. Yeah, so this, the, the, the EC2 fleet plugin has that feature and someone sent a PR to port mm -hmm. it to the EC2 plugin, but I don't think it was ever merged. Okay, interesting. Um, so that means we might see some build failure on that port. Most of the build on CI Jenkins say you have a, a retry, will be retried quite often. So even if it's annoying, like for the ATH, that might be an issue. Um, we have to see in reality the strategy I proposed there is to bid a bit a bit more than the current price. Like right now, for IMEM instance, it has been uh, 0.16 for the hour in dollars. So bidding at 0.20, which has never been reached, you are sure that you always have machine um, because. Right now, the thing is, if you bid a bit more on EC2, they are automatically putting you on what they they call spot block, where you say, I want a spot uh, price grant and usage guarantee for one hour or two hours or six hours. That behavior has been deprecated. It's still, um, it's still working until next year for the customer using it. But uh, the um, what I understood from the EC2 support, is that if you bid a bit more expensive than the price market, then you will you won't be evicted because they assume that will be a six hour block by default for now. So we should benefit from this behavior until next summer based on what they, they what they wrote on the support. However, uh, the risk is not zero and we might see some builds. So we have to be careful. And do you I mean do we have a way to detect such eviction? I mean, do we have a way to measure if just improving or decreasing the situation? Because as far as I know, we removed the Datadog agent, so we don't. And we discussed we discussed about having uh, working with Elastic to have the Open Telemetry plugin in place, but yep. we have not. So maybe it would be nice to to, to yes right it. right now we are blind. So if that thing happens, we rely only on the user being mad. And when they are mad enough that the threshold to alert us, which might not be the best experience ever for them, at least. Um, what do you think about we communicate to the developer mailing list that we did that change and we communicate to the end user, to the developer that, okay, if you see build failure due to an agent dying, please contact us because that might be related to that change. And we want to be sure because we are not able to monitor it carefully right now. Uh, and that means we should start also the open telemetry usage as well. Uh, I think we should find some way to, to start working on open telemetry. Because re to... relying, relying on people crying, I um, mean, that's something that it's not really reliable. <laughs> yeah, so. the, the, the mail to the, uh, the that, that was only a joke. We still need to communicate that information because as part of the platform, people need to know because Definitely. I don't want people thinking, oh, I did something wrong and my bill failed because I did something wrong, which is the worst case. But yeah, you're, you're correct. We should think about going back uh, to work on open telemetry.
No more question on that part. So the priorities will be spot instance for VM, spot instance for EKS, and then on Azure, because Azure is not a priority in terms of uh, 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 keeping the cost at bay. And Damien, in terms of how will we, how long will it take for us to decide if this has had a positive impact on, on infrastructure cost? Is that something we can measure relatively quickly or does it take a month for us to know if, if what the costs have been done? So usually it, it seems that a week is the, yeah. the, time, the time slot because uh, there, there, is a, a, there are a lot of bills during weekend, the Sunday. So we have a peak on Sundays or Saturdays, but during the weekend, there is a, a peak each week and the billing allows us to see the unblended costs daily. So right. I try to check weekly these times to see the impact. So it's been two weeks we changed with Hervé the, uh, the labels. We saw a trend, a decreasing trend, even the peaks is, uh, is smaller, the two past peaks. So we have decreasing trends. So now we should have one or two weeks before we start seeing some. Excellent, thank you, thanks very much. That's all for the AWS, unless someone has a question. One, two, three, okay. Sure. Um, next topic we have is the work in progress on the wiki. Uh, so Hervé is working hard on um, putting a static version of the wiki content uh, that should be in a, f uh, in a form of a Nginx server, a static web server inside the Kubernetes cluster. So static, that means all the HTML export is put under. Um, that's currently being tested. So there is an issue for that. Uh, Hervé, we have checked that Hervé is autonomous in any case for working on that, but we try to work on pairs from time to time. Anyone interested, say hello. Um, the idea is to have a static image that's quite simple and that should be uh, enough to have the dead links not dead anymore once it will be deployed and the DNS would have been moved to the AKS cluster. I put a link to the two repositories related to the wiki. So the first one is Confluence Data. Uh, so it contains um, Confluence um, pages exported to HTML. So that's the thing that Damien was mentioning. Uh, you broke my link. I don't know who put the comments. <laughs> um, so th this is so the idea is just to have a Docker image. So you can you can play with that Git repository. So just Docker image, and Nginx, and that's it. And then I don't think Damien you already mentioned public charts, which is a new Git repository. Um, but um, Irv is also working there to create a hand chart that would allow us allow us to deploy. Um, exported data. Um, you gave me the perfect transition for the next topic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that, that's why. So if you want to contribute or play, just go to those two Git repositories. You don't have a lot of content at this stage there, so it should be pretty easy to understand. Yep. I will recommend starting commenting the Jira issue, which, have be, which I just added, the infra 3092. Uh, to synchronize and see I want to work on that part before sending code, just to be sure uh, no one is coked off guard. So the next topic is around the cleanings up. We have different area where we need to remove dead code, remove dead dependencies, uh, remove you new things. Um, in, the, in the area of the charts who are working, there are already some issues on that topic to clean up the end file, the location of the end files. And so Hervé started a, a public chart repository that should be aimed to provide Elm chart to someone else than the Jenkins infrastructure team, which means the development methodology, the testing methodology and the deployment lifecycle release methodology on that repository will be with versions and release should be, let's say more strict and more clean because it's aimed to not only us, but someone else. Compared to the charts that we have, sometimes we want a chart which is latest version always with just a few objects. Also, 
the goal is also try to split the logic between an Elm file and a chart. A chart is a software that should be that you should be able to install anywhere, while the Elm file are the definition of what do we install on which cluster or now in infrastructure. So that's the that's the reason of that cleanup. So it has been started already with the public chart with the wiki chart. Um, we uninstalled during the cleanup last week something that was an arc um, a mirror that was a mirror running inside AKS that was aimed to be a demonstration of how to install a mirror if you have a Kubernetes cluster at home for the infrastructure. So instead of hosting that mirror, which is unused and cost us some dollars on AKS, the goal is to provide the associated Elm chart in the public chart in the future so we can advertise and show that as a resource. Um, but in the cleaning up, there are some incoming Puppet pull requests, which should be deleting everything related to Kubernetes in Puppet. Uh, because Puppet is not managing Kubernetes since a few years now, and there are, there are still some manifest and things. The reason is because if we want to, if we, if we want to start working on using the OSUSL machines as K3S cluster for providing workloads to CI Jenkins IO, the risk is to mix accidentally different kind of Kubernetes code. So let's start by removing that code not used anymore, see if it breaks something inadvertently that should not. And then we can start to work properly on the new clusters. Another thing that you want to clean up is Confluence resources. Yes, Confluence and Jira resources as well. Yeah, um, yeah good point. And finally, we have cleaning up of issues in Jira. So that's a weekly work in progress with uh, Hervé, Olivier, and Hai that we do from time to time, trying to clean up old issues that doesn't make sense, uh, close the incoming issues, or migrate them when they need when they have been created accidentally in our uh, Jira tracker. So as we said, I think it was two weeks ago. The user experience when opening an issue is terrible. That's a topic that we should bring to the advocacy team uh, because there is no nothing that helps the user when they click create an issue that helps them to know if they have to choose Infra or Jenkins project or something else on Jira. There isn't really any help. So that's why we end up with so much people opening uh, issues related to a plugin or an installation of their own Jenkins when they should go a be redirected either on the community, on the forum, IRC, or maybe on the Jenkins project. So, so we've got is the is the work that Gavin Mogan did on the plugin site for report an issue already a beginning towards that. When I click report an issue on the plugin site now, it takes me to a page that presents three choices: Do I want to create a bug, an enhancement, or a security issue? Is that kind of concept what you're looking for or something different? That could be a great help. Great help. Um, I don't know how much we can rely on Jira behaviors because for instance, we realized that if by any Google search, you ended up on Jira looking for an issue inside the infra, the infra project is put as the last default project when you create an issue on the next time. So maybe some setup on Jira is needed. I don't know how much of Gavin works would help to overcome that kind of behavior. Yeah, so, so as far as I could tell, he predefines the project as part of that URL that he's submitting, but it means you're outside JIRA, so it won't, it won't help in the case where you're already in JIRA as you described. That's a good one. So that should help, but yeah, that's a topic I would want to bring to advocacy. We don't have enough issues to justify spending too much time on that as part of the infra team, but communicating that issue can be a great help for the user experience and the advocacy or general community experience where it could be considered as a priority. Thanks for, I didn't know that we had that for the plugin, that's cool. Oh, oh, and you've got the redirect embedded in that. Very good. Okay, I wasn't didn't wasn't clear how it worked. I just know it works really well. So. Oh, nice one. Okay. Um, yeah. 
So that's all for the clean cleaning up. Some, unless someone there has a question, something to add. Okay, let's jump up. Uh, Olivier, that one is for you. Uh, Digital Ocean. So last week we we were not able to see the credits. You contacted and had a response from Lauren from Digital Ocean. What's the yeah, status? Th th that's true. So she, she confirmed that we received the credits, but we still don't see it in our um, user interface. So she's looking at it and try. So she yeah she raised the issue on our side on the on Digital Ocean side. So yeah, just waiting. So let's wait for when we are sure that we got the credits. Um, can you keep that item? So no, everyone is on receive the email of the exchange because I I did mark as well. So, yeah, so yes. there are multiple people in copy of uh, of cool. that discussion, and I think just this morning we 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 changed multiple emails. So it seems like things are moving. Okay. Um, so next topic is Packer image. Uh, two minor topics there. First one, there, is, there has been some work last week um, on update CLI to ease the uh, how we change a value in a file because that was not really user welcoming. It was working, but it was creating some uh, ghost pull requests where like a pull request that say update GDK8 where in fact it was changing something else on another line. Um, sounds like that should be to change with that change. That should help, so minor. And another minor element, uh, Mark and I started to work in pair on working on putting the Docker images for the infrastructure on CI Jenkins IO, so for the, the agents, as part of the Packer builds to be sure that we will have exactly the same thing whether you are running a container or virtual machine as agent on CI Jenkins IO or Trusted. That's not a uh, high priority uh, work. The goal is to pair on that. So I'm not the only one to master the Packer process. Um, and that's uh, some time to time. So the next one is Kubernetes 1.20 upgrades. Uh, since Digital Ocean is delayed because we don't have the credits yet, I propose that we put back the upgrade to Kubernetes 1.20 as an important topic to treat on the upcoming weeks because 1.19 Kubernetes Vanilla is now end of life. It's supported for uh, upcoming months on both Azure and Amazon where we have Kubernetes cluster running, but the goal will be to start upgrading to Kubernetes 1.20. So who would be interested to lead that subject in the upcoming weeks? So ju just to, to add more context on that topic. So we have created some IKMD uh, templates that we can use um, IKMD.io, that we can use when we do an upgrade. Um, and so if you want to look what we did in the past, um, you can go to Jenkins infrastructure slash documentation and under documentation maintenance Kubernetes, you see the past upgrade. So the idea is to do the same where we plan in advance all the things that may change. Um, and then we just document the procedure so it just gets easier and easier. So before upgrading the cluster, we need, yeah, there are a few things that we need to double check. Just to note, leading the subject does not mean you are doing everything. You can lead the subject and ask for someone to work uh, on the implementation. Ideally, we should do that on in pair. It's just to see if anyone is interested there. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so. so the, the, uh, the, 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 that, yep. That's a good exercise survey to see if you can create the document based on the permission you have. Um, and yeah, just, just start the process. Um, mm -hmm. So there is no deadline on that. We don't. You don't have to start uh, after the end of this meeting. Uh, let's say we could say we could challenge ourselves to uh, upgrade before end of November. Okay. As a nice to have, and we can say okay if we have to delay for whatever reason we can completely delay on December. Let's say the goal is before Christmas, but ideally November. 
Is that okay for everyone? Does it seem good? To... Yeah, Let, let's talk about the date once we start the document and we have mm -hmm. a first view of what yep. we need for the print. Completely. Uh, so, so let's say, Hervé, you lead the subject. I'll be there as your backup if you need anything. Okay. I volunteer to help on that topic. Um, okay. That's all. I saw someone I did GDK update in Docker image. Uh, you haven't yeah. checked who? Yep. So that was me. The I saw Red Hat issued a security advisory for JDK that included a need to update to JDK 8U 3, 312 and JDK 811.013. So, mm -hmm. so we've we've updated the Docker images, uh, but their first exercise in doing a release will be with 2.319 and with 2.303.3 security releases. So one of my worries was that I, I would, it would be an awkward thing if the Docker build process failed and caused Daniel or Vadek problems in the security release on Thursday. Is there something we should be, I should be doing or we should be doing to further assess the risk? I've already checked builds on each of those architectures interactively I did not attempt to publish an image, though. Uh, um, yeah, I just don't see how you could test. Uh, OK, that's so we I, just... I'm not sure. I, I mean, OK, yeah. So uh, I don't I, there is no easy way that come to my mind at this stage. Um, so first thing is we can be we can feel a lot safer if we start using these versions on the infrastructure for the builds SDKs. So on the agents of CI Jenkins IO and trust it, we need to be synchronized on both to avoid well, building and... something on CI. And when it's released on trusted, we, it, it will use different GDK. So I was, I was less concerned there because I've already updated my agents on my test cluster to use those. So I found no problem with, with either 8U312 or 11.0.13. So, so that part I wasn't as concerned about. And I was hesitant to say, let's change trusted or CI right now because we're, we're just before the security release. So I was almost of the, gee, let's leave it alone on those so that we don't risk disrupting for other reasons, the security release. Okay, so that means two things. We need to validate uh, with the security team and give them, okay, we used it since one week for instance, on the infra mm -hmm. to help them assess that it should be safe. And the risk is if we don't, if we keep, we stay conservative, that means we might need to create a new LTS release because last time we had to change something on the Docker image that was not uh, direct Jenkins. The last email on the dev mailing list was, okay, if you want to change whatever environment variable on the official image, you need to create a new Jenkins version. Yes, because it won't push an image if there is already one. Right, right. Good point. Exactly. Okay. So, so worth a discussion with the security team? Yes. Yes. Uh, worth because they need to, to understand that if we have to, to rebuild the new LTS release next week, that might be some time to spend on that. So yeah, that's worth the discussion with them right now as soon as possible. Okay, so since I'm the guilty party who, who proposed that pull request, I'll let me start that conversation with them and, and assure that they're aware that, that yes, 8U312 did have security things fixed in it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think any of them affected Jenkins. So I don't think there's any real threat to Jenkins, but, okay. but that way they're aware. Okay. Yep, and don't hesitate to communicate with them that we are already using most of our Kubernetes agents are using the same Eclipse base image as the official Jenkins controller. Ah, okay. So, so, so the agents have already, many of the agents have already switched to using the, the newest release of yeah. 11.0.13 or AU312. Great. Yeah. Thanks. I need, I need to double check that I'm not saying crap and that's, it's not my imagination. Uh, but uh, we, I've merged. Uh, update CLI releases last week and it has been deployed. So let me check. Um, not sure if it's uh, available for trusted CI. That that could that should be easy though. Um, Power PC. I don't know if they were able to release a Power PC for GDK eight. 
because the previous GDK8 version had a version, which is not the case of that one. So we need to check that, but since we don't have an official Jenkins Power PC image, that should be okay. Right, and we don't we don't actually deliver any PowerPC Docker images even. So, okay. so, so no we, worries. PowerPC is just not a risk for us right now in that sense. Okay. Um, okay, so if you lead the subject mark, don't hesitate uh, if you need backup on that one as well, if you are you have a lot of tasks. Uh, since we are all there and aware and we already started working on that, we can help the security team if they want. Great, thank you. Thanks for reporting that. Sounds like we cover yep. every topic. We Something are else? slightly over time. Yep. Thanks everybody for your time. Thanks everybody. Have bye a bye. Good day and see you on RC. Bye.